Hey, hey! So, moving on to lesson two of chapter one, looking at the straight line. The second lesson is looking at something called collinearity, which is something we haven't really come across before. So the first thing we want to think about is, well, what does collinear, collinearity actually mean? What it means is, imagine if you've got three points. If you were able to draw a straight line between them, you would say that those points were collinear. If you were unable to draw a straight line between the three points, so looking at this example here, we do have a straight line joining this point to this point and this point to this point, but it doesn't form a straight line overall. So you would say those points were not collinear. There are two things that make uh, a set of points a collinear, and you have to think about them both. So you must state that the lines are collinear as, and these are the two reasons. The first one is that they have the same gradient. So if you work out the gradient between this point and this point, you should be getting the exact same gradient between this point and this point. So if the gradient for that one was say three quarters, then the gradient for this bit here would also be three quarters. Or if the gradient for that was negative five, and the gradient for that was negative five, great, it's got the same gradient. So there is a chance it could be collinear. However, it also might not be. And there's something else that you need. And what it is, is you have to say that there is a common point between the two gradients that you're working out. So you can see here that if this gradient is the same as this one, well, because you're using this point and working out them both, then you could say the points were collinear. They're going to lie in a straight line. And Aaron, just for you, yes, you must state both reasons if you were doing this. Okay. A couple of examples then with this. So example one, prove that the points P, Q and R are collinear. So remember, you're wanting to say that those points, if you join them together, would form a straight line. So think about how you would do that. What you'd probably do is work out the gradient between P and Q. That would give you the gradient of this section. And you'd also work out the gradient of Q and R. So doing this one bit at a time. If you work out the gradient of PQ, once again, the gradient of the straight line, it's Y2 take away Y1 over X2 take away X1. So doing that then, subbing in the values, you've got negative three take away negative five over zero take away negative six. Just work that out. Remember, subtracting a negative, you add, so negative three add five, and then zero add six. So that gives you two sixths. Just simplify it if you can. That would give you one third. So we know the gradient between P and Q. Think about what you'd be expecting for QR. It tells you that these points are collinear. Just going back a page, you know the points are collinear, so think about it. We worked out the gradient for the first two points and we got one third. Think about what you would get for the next one and then just confirm it. Let's see what we have. So the gradient again is Y2 take Y1 over X2 take X1. Subbing in the values, so we've got one take away negative three and then 12 take away zero. Simplify that, so that's one add three, which becomes four. 12 take away zero is still 12. We get four twelfths. Again, simplify it if you can. You wouldn't leave it as two sixths and then the four twelfths. Simplify it, because if you do that, you will also get one third. So doing that, you can say that the gradient of PQ is equal to the gradient of QR. And you've also got to say that they share a common point. That point Q is common. Therefore, they would be collinear. Example two then, moving on. So second example, this time, are the points A, B and C collinear? So this time they might be or they might not. Again, if they are collinear, you'd be expecting the gradients to be the same, that's a common point. If they're not collinear, well, they're obviously going to share the common point still, but the gradients wouldn't be the same. So let's see what we have. So working this out, we have the three points, A, B, and C. So if we work out the gradient of A, B, it's Y2 take Y1 over X2 take X1. So three take away negative six over negative one take away two. That would become three add six, which is nine. Negative one take two is going to be negative three. If we divide that, 
Well, 9 divided by 3 is just going to be 3, and I've also got one of the numbers as a negative, so it's going to give me negative 3. Doing the same thing for BC, if I do y2 take y1 over x2 take x1, I'd have 8 take away 3 over negative 3 take away negative 1, which will then become negative 3 add 1. So on the top that gives me 5, and the bottom it would have negative 2. Uh, simplifying that with 5 over negative 2, no, there's no common factors, so really I'm just leaving it as the negative 5 over 2. I could write it different ways, but really from this you can see that the gradients are not the same. So although these uh, gradients would share a common point, you're working out AB and then BC, so the two lines share that common point, uh, the gradients are different, so that would be more like that uh, other example where you had the kind of L shape. It's going off to the side. So you can say that since AB, the gradient of AB, is not equal to the gradient of BC, the points are not collinear. And you just need one of the reasons to say that they are not collinear. Once again, there are questions in the book for you to try. It is the TJ and 2 credit book 1. You can also use the TJ uh, Higher book or the Heinemann book. There are other books. Uh, but on page 210, questions 14 to 19, there are questions similar to these. Again, check your answers as you go. Success criteria. I can get, determine if three points are collinear. Think about your understanding of this. Are you doing really well with it? Are you understanding it? Is it making sense? Is it another language that I'm speaking here? Or is it okay and you just need a bit more practice? Think about how you're getting on with this.